Hey everyone, it's Victoria and I'm so excited to be joined by Tom Hickman from J. Roberts and Son Gunmakers for this month's mini masterclass which is all about guns and how they're made. By the end of this video, hopefully you'll have a really good understanding about different parts of the shotgun, how they work and how a gun's made. I think this subject is so fascinating so it's great to have Tom here. So Tom, can you just tell us a little bit more about you and what you do before we get started please? Hello there. I'm Tom Hickman. I work for Joe Roberts and Son down in Sussex, as you said, and um, I'm, my apprentice—I apprenticed with them, um, started in 2012 and finished now. And working, I apprenticed as a, a gun finisher, so that's doing the finishing of the gun stocks and prepping for engraving. Um, but we do all sorts of gun fit and gun alterations for everyone, really. And uh, yeah, so we cover lots of bases down here in our little workshop. Brilliant, that's so good. They've got an amazing reputation, so yeah, it's really good to have you here. So let's get stuck in then. Can you just tell us what the main parts of a shotgun are, please? So the shotgun is basically the working parts, barrel and stock. The it, it's, it, it is as simple as that. It's normally two tubes, the cartridges go in, pull the trigger, goes bang, goes, and, and the wood is so it's comfortable. Brilliant. Um, yeah, and uh, there's lots of variations of the same thing, uh, and you, you, I've I've not been in the trade long enough to have seen them all, learnt about them all. There's there's so many di differences in them all. Mm -hmm. So, so how about things like um, could you point out things like the comb and like the heel and the toe, and just for those ladies that don't know. So your comb measurement, comb. And a lot of measurements now are done at face, and this is your heel. Mm -hmm. You've got your heel, toe, and your centre measurements, which normally is called length of pull. So that's from the trigger right the way back to the centre. You normally work your measurement from heel to toe from the centre. Brilliant. Excellent. So how about what's inside the kind of working parts of a gun? Well, this, this is um, one of our most popular guns we sell. This is a Rizzini 24 uh, round body. Um, this one's colour case hardened. It's not for everyone. Sometimes they call it finish, but um, inside here, um, I'll just show you quickly. There's two screws I've taken out, and in the back, there's a little hole which also has another screw. You can take that out and sit that in the vise, and that's your stock key. Mm -hmm. That goes up the back into a little Allen key slot. And then there, inside, is the working parts. That is amazing. Just fascinates me, all this kind of thing. Can you see that clearly? Yeah. Yeah. So, it's that, so that's your top lever and that does your opening and that yeah, so the barrels drop away so you can load it. That is connected to many things inside, but you've got a safety rod that runs along here. So that's your auto safe. A lot of clay guns don't come with them for reason, for other reasons, but most game guns come with your auto safe. Yeah. Um, let's just close that down. And point it. Right. This here is what's known as a tumbler, and that is what strikes the firing pin in there. So, um, I don't know if you might be able to see. Can you see that movie? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, that, that. This is these are your main springs. Your sears that sit on here, which the trigger's connected to. So it's all a chain reaction. You pull the trigger. That raises that. The this is called the inertia block. Yep. That goes forward, intercepts the sears. When you pull the trigger, they go up, releasing the tumblers, which hits the cartridge and goes bang. On this model, when you pull the trigger and the gun goes bang, this piece recalls back and then sets you up for your next shot. So it works off of recall, um, which can cause problems if you're shooting very light loads, um, if, or, if you're on a, a small clay day um, and you're shooting, or for noise when you're shooting 21 grams. Occasionally, the oomph isn't enough to switch the barrel, but that's very easy to alter. We just file in here. But, so that's basically the internal parts of a modern over and under. 
again, like I said before, it, they all vary and they all have their own versions of that. Some come without this block, so they just pull the trigger, bang, bang, so you can do it with snap caps. Oh, okay. um, and it will still switch over. Yeah. Can you just but, yeah. explain what a snap cap is, actually? Because that's a good point. Yeah. This is one of our own, look, Jay Robertson's son. Oh, nice. First one to board out. Yeah. Um, snap cap, that goes in the ch chamber of the barrel. Bear with me. So this is just an old side of sight, but so that sits in there. And so what it does, you can use the gun to practice to get the feel for the trigger pulls um, and get used to the way the gun feels without damaging. Because a lot, if you pull the trigger without uh, snap caps in, the firing pins can jolt too forward, and that's how you end up with a a broken firing pin. So these are literally exactly the same as a cartridge. They've got a spring piece in the top. And so that the pin hits that, but hits yeah. back against it, so it won't break, basically. Brilliant. But they're really useful. Um, and you can, we use them for testing ejection and for testing the way a gun feels. And we, we, yeah, we use them a lot. Excellent. Okay, so making a gun from scratch then, Tom, how long does it take? I think that's quite a you know, good question to know. Yeah, um, I mean, we, we here, we make bolt-action rifles. We do occasional double rifles. We're more of a rifle manufacturer. Um, excuse me. Some of the best guns can take from um, probably 18 months onwards. Some are quicker. The Rizzinis that we have in stock, we um, we have them made to measure because we're the custom shop. So uh, mm -hmm. people come to us and tell us what, what they want, and we build them to their specification, which is very popular as you can imagine yeah. um, and we normally they normally take within six months to eight months again depending on what it is if it's hand engraved sometimes longer um, mm. but, but because there's not so many people in the trade um, anymore there's cues for the people that are doing the sort of jobs that we can't do here so the engraving mm. and um, yeah so Oh, amazing. So what is the process of actually having a gun made for you then? Could you just talk us through well, that? Well, when, when we have, um, we'll have, normally it starts with an email, hello, I'm interested in one of these, do you have this in stock? Um, and more often than not, we say yes. Um, and if, and then a lot of the time we have people come to us and say, I need a gun, I want this, this and this, I can't find one anywhere, is it something you can do? Mm -hmm. And we have a list of specifications we go through each one and we we discuss with the person um, why they want what they want and um, a lot of the time they go oh I hadn't thought about that oh that's a good idea it's because well my boss Paul Roberts has been in the trade for 60 years yeah. so over the years you learn what people want and what just phases are and things but mm. often it's barrel length what choke although most of the guns we do are multi-choke Mm -hmm. stock length, stock measurements, um, engraving, and it's all the sort of the finer detail, which takes the time, but it's once you've got that basic, this is what's going to happen. We're not going to have a game room, we're going to have a ventilator bib, you know. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Send off the um, um, order form, and yeah, six months later, we get a case come over. So um, very satisfying. Yeah, awesome. So you said that you don't do um, engraving on site. You send that off somewhere else. So can you tell us, um, for those ladies that don't know, um, how like how do they actually do engraving these days on, say, like a mid kind of range gun as opposed to you know, like a vest? Well, this one uh, is that is that close enough? Yeah, you, that's perfect. Yeah, you can you can see the scroll. That's actually done by laser now. So how it works is when their guns go into their first prototype models they'll 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 get it all functioning and an engraver a hand engraver will do hand engraving of the whole thing so it would be properly hand engraved and much more time and effort goes into them yeah. but then all the computers take over they'll scan it all and modern day laser will engrave that and i mean you can't feel it but it's as crisp as hand engraving now and modern engraving is this laser engraving is really something to, well, it's, you can see it for yourself. It's, um, it's a work of art. It is. Yeah, it is. Um, 
with the colour case hardened actually, I've got, I've just, bear with me, um, probably clearer with that one. So, oh, yeah. you see, yeah, so you can see that one clearer. Yeah. So that's the same gun, but with a coin finish like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, and you can see the detail, as well as the laser engraving on the actions, the laser will also cut the checkering. Mm -hmm. um, in England, we don't do do it by laser. That's all done by hand, and it's it's done by lines to the inch. So this is, um, I think, this is about twenty two lines to the inch, um, and on on average, it's twenty two lines to the inch or twenty, and that just gives you the feel in your hand, same as on the fore end. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just for comfort and for grip. Some people don't like it for sh like sharp styles. That there's all different styles you can have with it um but uh yeah it's it's the uh, the idea is just for grip in your hand yeah so yeah, it's, it's like it never like ceases to amaze me just like how much work goes into making a gun it's just like it, it yeah. really is like an art isn't it it's you know well you are you know it, well you? it's uh, um i mean checkering which i do now um on on english guns that's taken me probably well i've been in seven years this summer twice that's scary um but it's taken me all of that time to really sort of get in get to grips with it and like i said earlier with you'll never learn about every single gun the same as every gun maker has their own style of checkering so if we restock a gun and so i'll copy what's on that old stock um and there's uh yeah every, there's always little personal touches Mm, like signatures yeah because no no two people can check it and check it the same they've got different eyes they've got different hands they've got different feel of the checkering tool um a checkering tool just to show you i love your yeah. workshop <laughs> yeah uh it's full that's the problem <laughs> okay. so that's a that's a checkering tool this is a homemade job um and that that cuts your sort of master lines and goes through it um that will just make it sharp and comfortable and then these tools with them if you can see yeah so that's that cuts three lines at a time but i don't often use that i prefer working with two lines at the time so it's yeah. so precise and, isn't it it's incredible like the patience how long would it take to check a, a gun um it, it depends so this one here, this is one of our new rifles, which um, this is a 375 bolt action rifle, which you probably won't be shooting at your clay day. But um, so this one, that's, that's hand checkered and you can probably see the difference between um, blazer and hand done. Yeah. Um, that was probably six hours in total. I've still got to run through it uh, the final time once I've all finished it. So that's just what we call laid on. So it's laid on the checkering. Mm -hmm. And then once that's uh, all finished, we'll um, then I have to run back through it to crisp it all up. Wow. Um, Gosh, patience is the same. That's incredible. Yeah. So how, and, uh, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say it's, uh, I have to do it. <laughs> and these are very useful. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Because it's really fine, and it's because it's for such a prolonged period of time, and you, it's in a jig that sits in the vice, and you sort of work away, mm -hmm. and your your brain does start to wander. <laughs> I bet it does. Gosh, that's incredible. Yeah. Um. So, how about um maintenance of guns then? So, what would you say to say a lady who's just um got her first gun? What would you say? Um. How? Yeah. How would you recommend that she like cares for it? So would you say, you know, getting it serviced or little things that she needs to look out for? Or? Well, we, we often say um, once a year before the season, I mean, with clay shooting, it goes all year round. That's, um, but with because we predominantly use and work with game guns before the season, normally not the week before, because then we're, <laughs> we're a bit chock and block. But, but you get a few um, of those. Bring the gun in, just give it a, a, a check over. Um, mm. cause on, especially on old English guns, trigger pulls can wander. If you've got the gun wet um, in the season, the internal parts can rust very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I'll show you this one here. This is a Beasley. So this is a so this is a 
side by side, side locks and all. Uh, so, so this is much more original, sort of old fashioned, where guns began. The same as the over and under, these are the working parts. That's your tumbler, that hits the firing pin. The trigger comes up and engages in here. This, the one that sits next to it, is called an intercept sear. So if you drop the gun, that will intercept and not let the. Um, oh, great. So that will sit in half cock, essentially. Yeah. So that's, that's what's known as, that's ready to fire. The trigger comes up, that pushes both of those, and then that will go bang. But if the gun is dropped in an accident, mm -hmm. this will sit halfway round and won't hit the firing pin so accidents don't happen. It's very good safety yeah. um, and it's always good to check that they're actually going to do their job. Mm -hmm. With regards to maintenance, um, if the gun gets really sopping wet on a shoot day, um, a lot of people go, oh, just stick it by the Argo. That's, please don't do that because often wood will swell, wood's a natural thing and the amount of guns we come in, oh, oh, my gun got wet and I put it on by the Arga and uh, the gun split because wood will move and twist with heat and cold. So, mm. yeah, don't do that. It's better to just sit it, let it dry naturally in sort of room temperature, not by heat, and then bring it into your gunsmith, your local gunsmith, and they'll open it up, like I showed earlier, check that none of the working parts have got um, rusty or just sometimes you it's just sort of condensated in there, which will develop into rust. Mm -hmm. And then we use, um, well, I use three and one mixed with Vaseline. Three and one is uh, sort of like the basic multi-purpose oil. Mm -hmm. That's for the internals. Um, the barrels, um, you want to have a good solid um, wire um, cleaning brush. Uh, it's called Phosphor Bonds. So, yeah. something like that. So that's this one's for a 20 bore. And that wire wool. Is what we use to remove leading and leading is often overlooked in barrels so in the front where the cartridges go just in front of there where the first lot of cartridge and um, shot rolls up it leaves what's called and uh, known as leading and it's literally the lead rolling up the barrels and if that sits there, there for a long time it can cause pitting and mm. sort of dulling of the barrel so it's um, chamber brushes will clean that out. A chamber brush, uh, I don't think I've got one in here at the moment, but it's basically exactly the same as that, but that long and slightly thicker. Mm -hmm. And so you can really scrub the chambers. And clean chambers is, like I say, where the cartridges go. That needs to be clean for smooth ejection, and uh, it just aids with faster reloading, that sort of things. Yeah. You want your cartridges just to slide in and be flown and thrown out um, <laughs> when, when it's all functioning, so. Brilliant. Yeah. So, Tom, how about gun fit then? Gun fit varies a lot for each person, because like I said earlier, everyone's different. Um, but of late we've been doing, it's great to see lots of ladies are coming into shooting. Um, the problem we have is guns being sold to people without the knowledge in the sense of knowing what the correct mount and fit should look like. Um, we have ladies come in with guns that are three inches too long for them and they're stretching. And if you're not comfortable and you're thinking about, oh God, this doesn't feel very comfortable, you're not gonna focus on the clay. So it's I recommend come into your local gun fit and have someone look at you. If, you. if you're having lessons, they should guide you on this as well. Um, there's what's known in the trade as a lady's toe. Well, it's not the trade, it's just everywhere. And it's adjustment of this pitch. So on, on the shape, it just doesn't jab you right in the top of the chest. It's, it's all about comfort We're all and we fit and soft pads. Because again, if you're thinking about all that hurt, you're not gonna be, you don't wanna, you'll start developing a flinch and you won't want to, uh, continue developing your, your clay shooting. The other one to mention is, like I was saying earlier, this cone measurement. This is the height in the pitch here, and it and that is what you're seeing down the barrel. So if your head is right down out the way, you're not going to be able to see what you're looking at. So 
sometimes we fit comb raises, just temporary ones, just to see if it, and it just holds the head up. Yeah. So you, if you can see the clay through the shot, um, and a lot of sh shooting grounds are sort of um, pushing higher combs because it's just the more modern way of shooting. Yeah, and I think I think you know as women we tend to have like higher cheekbones, longer necks, and stuff. Yeah. And so yeah, we are kind of a bit squashed down on you know quite low combs. I mean, it's just just they just don't work for us. Yeah. Also, it's um, the weight of a gun. Um, clay guns tend to be heavier, so they. Um, the heavier the gun, the more recoil it will take away from your shoulder. Um, but then at the same time, you've got to be wary of the fact you're going to be swinging it. So if you're particularly small, it's worth going for a slightly lighter gun, mm -hmm. having a big, thick recoil pad, and maybe a pad in your vest if the recoil is an issue. Um, it's all things to think about when you're purchasing a gun, or having one made if you're <laughs> lucky enough. Um, we, um, yeah, so we fit and alter all. That sort of thing as well. So Brilliant. it's just it's just just something to think about when you're buying a gun. Definitely, yeah, that's amazing. And so barrel length. Oh well, yeah, and barrel length. Yeah, it's a big one. <laughs> don't, don't yeah, don't don't buy a 32 inch barrel just because that's what everyone else shoots. Because if you're five foot four, you don't want 32 inches. A 28 inch, even 27 can do it, and it will feel like a 32 because it's scaled down or something. Because you are smaller so yeah, brilliant so that all sounds amazing tom so do you have any final thoughts for the ladies watching this before we close out this fascinating little chat i, th I think something to really think about is gun fit like we just touched upon there um and really thinking about what you want there's no rush when you're buying a gun mm -hmm. ask for advice and and just always remember that if something doesn't feel right it normally isn't so if something's giving you grief, go back to your gunsmith or where you bought the gun and ask, right, this is hurting me here. Sometimes people won't be able to help you, but then it's not worth just giving up. Um, try and ask for advice and seek it. And uh, I mean, I'm always at the end of the phone if you, <laughs> if oh, you need so it. Oh, you're so good. Oh, that's so, such, yeah, great advice. Thank you so much. So if people want to find you online, where... What, or, or offline actually um, where can we find you well we've got a um, website which is Jay Robertson Sun Gun Makers it's just easy to type into Google mm -hmm. um, we're not up to date on we are on Facebook actually yeah. Jay Robertson Sun Gun Makers are on there as well um, should probably get on to Instagram at some point but uh, I'm on there personally yeah um, but uh, yeah and what's your, yeah, so, your what's your personal Instagram name at Gunman Tom. Brilliant. So I recommend that all ladies follow you. <laughs> the, 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 most of it is guns because I'm a sad act, but <laughs> no, well, that's what that's what we love. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. And um, yeah, we're um, we we most of a lot of the guns are on a website called Gunstar as well. Isn't it? Oh, okay, great. Oh, well, I'll put all the links to that with this video as well. And yeah, yeah. This has been so useful. Thank you so so much. I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye bye.